Don Twitty with us. He is the new ice hockey coach at Lackawanna College. Uh, Don, uh, you never know when your last uh, you know game is as a coach or what you're going to coach next. But for you, uh, that window is always open, and uh, Lackawanna College is lucky to get you. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for my uh, youngest daughter who insisted that I uh, apply for this job, um, I don't think I'd be here. She insisted. She kept pushing me, and I went ahead and applied for it and had met with Joyer and her staff, and they hired me, and I'm looking forward to a great season or great season in 2021. Let's talk about the, the challenges or that lie ahead. I mean, you've coached all different levels, and that. they're going to have to recruit college kids to come, and but you're going to get a whole year under your belt to, to get that going, right? Right, John. Um, when I was coaching 10 years for the University of Scranton, it was easy to get kids. They were coming there because they were coming from the public or the parochial schools in New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and he knew about the University of Scranton their hockey program. Now I'm starting fresh. Last weekend I went down to Philadelphia. I monitored a couple games, talked to about a dozen students, got a couple kids that are interested, got their names and everything on file, and I'm going to be working to recruit. And my goal is to recruit 25 kids. I still want to recruit from the local area, but I need to recruit also from outside to be a, compet a real competitive program. You yeah, talk about the game of hockey. Uh, take us through uh, how you started, where you started. Uh, I know it'll be a nice story for us. <laughs> John, I started way back in 1968 when I was 10 years old. Um, with my neighbors and I was playing street hockey, we decided to join a local learn to skate, learn to play hockey program out of Suffern, New York. From there, I played just the winter time. Lice was shut down first week or second week of March, and we picked it up again in the mid-November time frame. By the time I got to high school, or the high school I attended had a high school team. I really wanted to play on it. Worked hard my freshman year. I played on the JV team. I did the stats for the varsity team. Worked real hard all summer. Rinks were now starting to stay open. Um, 12 months a year, so I was getting out of extra ice time. Um, two people that were very big in it were Frank Horan and Barbara Budrock Horan. They developed my talents. I loved how they handled everything. My sophomore, junior, and senior year, I played for the varsity team at my local high school. From there, I attended, I played some junior hockey. I attended a two year school, Rockland Community College. Played a uh, year at Rockland, got that under my bum, under Juco, looked and said, now I want to get into coaching. 1979, 78-79 season was my first year of coaching. I wanted to get back to the program. I wanted to be like Frank and Barbara uh, Haran and get involved. And I got involved and I've been doing it ever since, right through the uh, Isorama days in Wilkes-Barre, opening the ice box in uh, Pittston and then moving over to uh, with Penguins and running the Coal Street or helping out with the Coal Street program. Hockey in Northeastern Pennsylvania, go back to some of those days, obviously the, the Isorama, you know, not many people were that interested. It seemed like when the Penguins hit, that's when it really exploded. Go back to Kevin Blom and him pushing for, for hockey in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And there are other people, but a guy like you, you're kind of one of those guys that always was advocating for people to play more hockey. Hey, give it a shot. Try it out. Yeah, John, as you know, we got a lot of people involved, and I just try it. Give it a shot. Try it. I love it. If I love it, maybe you'll love it. I find out 75% of the people I say give it a shot to, they stick with it. They enjoy the game. Um, with Kevin Blom and um, Jeff Barrett developing the Penguins here, it also helped grow the program. We were maxed out at the Isorama. I had gotten so many kids, I had started the high school program there, moved it over to the ice box, and once the Penguins, it exploded. And we developed, and I still see kids come in, they look at me, can we try goaltending? My kid wants to play hockey, and I'm, I said, come on, I'll get you out there, come on. Unfortunately, times are early. We skate at 6, 7 a.m. And most weekends, I get up on at 4 a.m., and I open the rink anywhere between 5.30 and 5.45, and I'm usually there until 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The local hockey, so Wilkes and Kings have really, you know, tried to do what they can here early. Uh, Wilkes put on a really good product on the men's side. 
women's team developing, Kings developing the women and men's teams. And now uh, Lackawanna College is going to be doing that. There's opportunities um, to bring in players. As you said, you're getting out there, you're, you're letting them know about us uh, here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And now it's going to be a part of the Falcons on the ice. So uh, as far as the teams that you're going to be playing and, and, and that type of stuff, there's still going to be very good competition for you, right? Yes, the competition is basically when I was at the University of Scranton, it will be the same type of competition. We'll play University of Scranton, Bloomsburg has a team, and East Stroudsburg. So that's nice. I'll have three teams locally that I can play. But I'm still going to play the Villanovas, the Westchesters, the Millersville, Rutgers University. Hopefully, Binghamton University will pick up games with us. And we will play within a two-hour radius of the you know Northeast Pennsylvania area. You said 25 players. Let's talk about kids getting their feet wet academically and being on the ice. It should be a a nice opportunity for them to say, okay, hey, I know what I got to do here in the classroom. And, and you know, as you said, there probably are going to be some early or late practice times for a college team. Yes. Yeah, the one thing we have is, like you said, early, late practice times. Um, this past year, being involved with the uh, Coal Street Rink, Wilkes University came in and practiced at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, I haven't set up the practice schedule yet, but 6 a.m. or 11.15, 11.30. With the University of Scranton, I always had 11.30, 12 o'clock practices. So hockey players are used to those times. And they can, you know, we develop a program there. I talk to the boys, like, and they know right away. When you say you're going to do 6 a.m., they have a regiment they follow to get, you know, be there in time. Hockey players come in all different sizes, you know, 5'8", 6'3". There's all different types. Is there a specific prototype you're looking for or you're just looking for to get people interested first in the program and then have them kind of develop it for the Falcons. This past weekend I was down in Philadelphia looking at them and I was looking at a team from called, from Brooklyn, New York called the Greater Stars. I also, the team they were playing was the Long Island Gulls. Looked at the players there. Yes, there's guys out there foot, six foot three and like you said five foot eight. There was about like I said, half a dozen kids from Greater um, New York Stars that I talked to, and those kids, there was two kids that were six foot two, and there was two kids five foot eight. So the hockey player, you don't have to be any longer the six three, six four player. You just go out there and you talk to them. They've got to have the skill, they've got to have the want, and the, and the drive. And the same thing with the Long Island Gulls. I talked to a couple of their. Uh, parents and players and they were excited that we were starting the program they're going in this senior year took some information gave it to them and we'll see what comes out of that but yeah they're all different sizes and shapes Lackawanna College uh, they got sold on you uh, what sold you on them Joya Whittington and and the, and the university there at Lackawanna College uh, you know basically you got a lot of success in the sports programs um, but it, it's really been a progressive uh, college in, in the Stranton area. Yes, and the reason I did it, like I said earlier, my daughter convinced me. My daughter went there two years to school. She played soccer, basketball, and um, softball at the school. So I said, let's give it a shot. She's, and I, the different coaches I've known, Matt, Joya coached her, my daughter in basketball her last year. Danny Berg, who's involved with the athletic department, coached her in soccer. So I got to know them. I was very impressed with them. I like how they handle themselves. My, they've handled my daughter tremendously. She helps out with the tournaments going on there and working at the CAYC when they need her help. That I felt it was a good shot and a good place for me to be at. All right, John. Well, congratulations on the new gig, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do well. Good luck. Thank you, John.